life on Mars comes back punching after a breather week, and Teju has one thing on his mind, vengeance. Tejo's dad's death gets Teju tangled with a deadly gang leader, and he runs smack into one of the biggest corruption rings he's encountered at the worst time. But when you have conviction and a rough and ready team at your back, sometimes things can work out. Episode 9 Recap Teju watches his father shot dead in front of him, and collapses. Elsewhere, young Teju hides alone in the darkened tunnel, sobbing and afraid. The police officers mount a hunt for the young boy, and finally find him. Teju gently takes his young self in his arms. Both child and adult Teju scrutinize the team, before child Teju buries his face away. Back at his apartment, our Teju mindlessly watches TV while the scene of his father hitting the young woman flashes through his thoughts. The old man from before, who is the actual lead actor from the 80s TV show Teju is watching, Chief Inspector, speaks to him through the television, don't blame yourself. There's nothing you can do now, Detective, Tejo's face hardens as he disagrees, no, there is something I can do. I will find a way to go back. At the morgue, Teju barely keeps it together as Dr. Park informs Teju that Dad was killed with a .389 bullet, and asks if it's true that the Seong Ho gang are the ones responsible. As soon as Dr. Park is pulled away, though, Tejo's tears fall, and he collapses to the floor beside the body of his father. Determined to catch Dad's killer, Teju is quick to order the team to investigate the Seong Ho gang to find the link with the man he suspects of ordering the hit, CEO Oh Young Man. Nam Shik and Yong Ki immediately protest that the Seong Ho gang is a well-organized and dangerous organization that more than a few police officers have fallen foul of when trying to investigate. Unfazed, Teju asks if this means the police shouldn't do their job, although Dong Chul looks distinctly unhappy when Teju requests that Oh Young Man be brought in for questioning. Na Young arrives with the news that a muscle relaxant was found on Dad's clothes, which Dong Chul seeks to dismiss but can't when Na Young points out that the same relaxant was found on the other murder victim, Go Young Suk. Teju is convinced this means the same person killed them both, and only Oh Young Man fits that description. Dong Chul firmly tells Teju that there's no point in considering Young Man a suspect, and hurries out of the station before Teju can stop him. At least Na Young doesn't seem daunted when Teju asks her to compile a list of the Seong Ho gang members for him. With a heavy heart, Teju takes Dad's box of possessions to give back to Mom. He discovers that young Teju can't remember anything of the traumatic scene he witnessed, so adult Teju advises Mom to tell the boy that his father has gone back to Saudi Arabia. Mom terribly accepts the box of clothes and the baseball. Coldly focused, Teju hunts down a young man at the hotel he's staying at, and bursts in on a golf club wielding young man, just as he is about to take another swing at a bloodied woman at his feet. Young man is so cocky that even when Teju introduces himself as a police officer, young man orders him to come back later. Young man is in for a surprise though, as Teju refuses to leave, handily dispatches young man's resident thugs, and promptly announces that he is under arrest for assault. Young man shark smiles as he apologizes for not recognizing Teju to begin with, and offers his hand, which Teju slaps a pair of cuffs on. In the interrogation basement, Teju asks a young man when he came back to Insung, and whether he ordered Dad's and Young Suk's deaths. Even half-dressed, Young Man is a cool customer as he notes that Teju must be new around here and smirks, saying, I can't stand it when other people touch my things. If they were standing in front of me, I wouldn't order anything. I would murder them myself. Before Teju can question him further, Dong Chul interrupts and flings the interview recorder against the wall to smash it into smithereens. Obviously familiar with each other, Young Man knowingly smiles at Dong Chul and apologizes for not coming to greet him earlier. Furious, Dong Chul yells at Teju that he told him to wait before he arrested Young Man. Just as angry, Teju replies that he wasn't going to wait when it looked like Dong Chul never wanted the investigation to start, and pointedly asks if he's really that intimidated by Young Man. Affronted, Dong Chul tries to tell Teju that he isn't intimidated, and that Teju doesn't know everything. Sure enough, head detective Kim kyung she appears at the top of the stairs, looking very put out, and we cut to the disheartening scene of kyung she wishing young man goodbye, let go as a free man. dong Chul quietly sneers, what a scene. It isn't the only indignity dong Chul has to suffer, either, as a basket of expensive fruit is left on his desk from young man's lawyers. 
Although Yong Ki is particularly taken by the bananas, Dong Chul rejects the bribe as he asks, What, do they think we're a bunch of monkeys? Taeju, meanwhile, bitterly confronts Kyong Shae and tells him that he is going to apply for a search warrant for Young Man. Knocking Taeju on the back foot, Kyong Shae asks whether he even wants to go back home, and Taeju hesitantly asks if there's a way. Kyong Shae agrees that of course there is, so long as Taeju keeps quiet. From the way that Taeju brushes the imprint of Kyong Se's hand from his shoulder, I don't think he likes that advice. By the time Taeju comes back, Dong Chul has left to return the fruit basket to Young Man. Taeju follows, and finds a jovial young man surrounded by beautiful women, including the one he had beaten earlier, the fruit basket sitting out near an extra whiskey glass. Young Man informs Taeju Dong Chul was called away on a business matter. Taeju watches from afar as Dong Chul handles the business matter, and makes a big show of rejecting an envelope of money from an appreciative citizen. Dong Chul is just about to accept the package when he becomes aware of Taeju, and quickly covers by slapping the money to the ground. Dong Chul blusters that he isn't that kind of cop in the face of the clearly confused man, but Taeju has already slipped away. He's back to the scene of his father's murder, trying to retrace the killer's steps as he heads deep into the forest beside the railway tracks, where he finds a dropped inhaler. Taeju hurries back to the station to ask Na Young to process the evidence, and is disappointed, but not surprised, to hear that his search warrant for young man has been rejected. When he asks where everyone is, Na Young answers that they've gone home, lol, Taeju, which means it's left to just the two of them to exhaustively draw up profiles of the Seong Ho gang members. When Taeju makes Na Young a cup of coffee, she smiles and notes that it's always her making coffee for other people, so it feels weird to receive a cup, but it's good. Na Young asks whether Taeju ever gets tired, since he never stops working or takes a break. This reminds Taeju of their broken cinema date, which he apologizes for, but Na Young tells him it doesn't matter, since she got the tickets for free anyway. Nu, no, it does matter, Na Young. Taeju is pulled away for a disturbance at Young Man's Club, where a man beats a woman, and only stops when Taeju pulls him off her and chucks him out the door. Alone in a private booth, Taeju recognizes the woman, Kim Young OK, as the one that Young Man beat up as well. She acerbically asks if Taeju is Tarzan or something, since he keeps rescuing her. Young OK refuses to go to hospital when it's futile because she will be beaten again shortly, and tells Taeju she has a debt to work off for Young Man. She asks why Taeju hasn't arrested Young Man yet since he is a murderer, and tells him that Young Man lied about going to Seoul. Young Man was in Insung, a young OK continues, and he ran out on the morning Dad died with his gun after receiving the phone call. Excited, Taeju asks Young OK to go on record with this information, but she declines and states that she doesn't want to die by Young Man's hands, especially not now that her debt has paid off and she can finally return to her hometown. Young OK asks if Taeju doesn't want to return to Seoul, and he replies feelingly, I do. But I can't seem to. The two end up commiserating and sharing copious drinks, although it seems to hit Taeju harder. Young OK dreamily says that when she goes back home, she's going to open her own dressmaking shop and points to her handmade scarf. Taeju can't properly admire it as his head drops to the table, unconscious. Remnants of powder dot his shot glass. Young OK brings him back to a bare room, and Taeju catches glimpses as she arranges him on the bed, but isn't strong enough to push her away. Intercut is a doctor looming over Taeju and asking him if he's OK. It isn't until morning that Dong Chul finds Taeju, handcuffed and half-naked. At the station, Yong Ki leers at Taejo.